Well, I don't typically repair VCRs. Um, this is a special exception. The owner of this mid-1990s Sony SLV400 um, specifically had asked me to uh, take a look at this VCR that he has and um, see if it can be fixed. And uh, what I found was that this thing is so worn out. Um, as a matter of fact, this is the first time I've ever seen a capstan bearing fail. In fact, this bearing was seized when I started uh, working on this, or when I first took it apart. And if you look at the capstan, the, um, the chrome coating is completely pitted and worn off. The rubber roller is glazed pretty badly. The head barely see it but it has several damaged areas um, the upper drum has a gouge in it from the worn out head cleaner which I will remove um, as a side note uh, if you have an older VCR that has the automatic head cleaning feature after about two years or so it's a good idea to just remove this because uh, once this felt pad wears away um, the it becomes worn in a way that it can actually catch onto the heads themselves. Um, if you look underneath the drum, the rotating drum here, you see a little notch on the bottom. And inside that notch is what is in fact the read right head. And in this case there's four of those. And those heads consist of tiny coils of wire wrapped around um, I believe a mica or some kind of a, it's a brittle um, material and what can happen is this uh, ragged foam pad can catch onto that head and either break it off or start tearing away the wires and that's once that happens you need a whole new upper drum and uh, that's a bad thing anyway in this particular VCR <clears throat> It has a, a fairly common symptom where you pop the tape in it starts to load the tape and then it, you can hear the uh, you can hear the motor that drives the cam gear rotating but nothing happens. Tape, which I'll show you how to do in a minute but on the bottom side you can see this is a double cam system um, and to get it to work even that much I had to lubricate the cams and what I ended up using was bicycle chain lube which is a gel like uh, substance and it doesn't drip or slough like um, uh, like some greases or oils do um, so it, it works very well but I'm going to clean all that up and lubricate it with lithium grease. I'm also going to re-lubricate all these slides and, and uh, anything that appears to have had grease at one time. I'm going to put some lithium grease, which works very well on these. Um, but all these belts have to be replaced. This drive belt isn't too bad, but it's this belt. This is the one that you hear slipping. It's very flexible. It has almost no substance to it anymore. It's really bad. So we're going to replace that belt. And you can obviously see that it's been slipping. Um, the kit to repair this VCR includes all belts and um, a new capstan pinch roller. And that costs about 20 bucks at um, studiosoundelectronics.com. So we'll pop the tape in and show you how to get this thing to, to load the hard way. Involved. It took me about three or four attempts to get it to work before. So What you've got to do is as the motor starts to slip, or the belt, you've got to try to manually kick it in the direction it wants to go in. Okay, we missed that one. That's going to eject. We'll try that again. 
after so many attempts, it'll shut down. Okay, we got it. Now if I hit play, there it goes. Now it's playing. Well, how good. The display is a fluorescent display and it's it's actually gone dim. You can almost barely read it. But anyway, oh, we're out of time. Until then. Well, as you can see, I've removed the, uh, the capstan motor. Well, the, the drum, and not the drum, the uh, flywheel, whatever. Well, here's the, um, the capstan motor pulley and uh, magnet flywheel. And as you can see, the capstan is badly rusted. I wish this camera had macro, but it doesn't. But anyway. A total transformation. Well, turns out what I thought was corrosion and pitting was actually particles from worn out tapes. I was able to get the cap stand to shine like brand new. Okay, I found it was easier to remove the transport from the um, from the housing. Well, here's the chassis completely disassembled, aside from the electronics. Um, now here's the deck and uh, transport mechanism, and I'll show you exactly what I did to every every component. Um, all gears. Uh, with steel spindles received one drop of SAE 20 oil. All points that slide or um, pivot uh, received a, a good dousing of um, lithium grease. Um, these are the tracks for the uh, tape transport. Um, this is what wraps the tape around the head and uh, those tracks I, I uh, swabbed them with some lithium grease. Um, you know, given the age of the machine, I figure if I lubricate everything, it'll slow down the wear and tear on the system for a little while. Um, it's when the lubrication starts to harden and dry up. That's when the um, it puts added stress on the whole mechanism, so things start to wear out faster. But by doing this, you can prolong the deck. You know, without any major failures for a little bit longer. Um, the head, I did the best I could to clean. Um, I'm going to wipe it down with a swab again. Some lithium grease got on there. You know, clean that off. Um, but you can see there's still some markings. Uh, there's one right there. And uh, there's another one on the other side from the head cleaner. And the chrome finish is worn badly. I can't get it any cleaner than this. Um, but I've removed, on any deck this old, always remove the automatic head cleaner pad. Um, even though it's still physically here, it won't hit anything. That prevents further damage to, this, to the upper drum. Um, and more lubrication in, in all the key areas. Uh, the tape loader mechanism uh, lubricate all the slides, pins, and gears. The worm gear should always get some attention. Um, not much, but just get some grease in there. But despite its poor construction, I mean, I, I can't say this is a quality deck. Um, it's last quite a while. 17 years of hard use. So, we'll get it back together and, and see if she still runs.